Domine. Guys, we play a little bit of uh, Gregorian chants in the morning. It's only like three, four minutes. I know I don't have a clock on there. It's not that long to sit and be patient. But anyway, I just wanted to address some stuff. This is the best liturgical show on the planet. You might not realize it because you might be blind to the truth. You might not have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal savior yet. You're not watching the show or listening to the show the way you need to. Go listen to some other liturgical based shows where they do the daily readings, right? Where they talk about, well, they, I don't even think they do the daily readings and the saints and stuff, but maybe they do. Bottom line is we bring the personality. Go listen to some other similar shows and, and then you'll see the difference. But really in the end, everything is vanity. Ambia vanitas. It's all BS, really. People that know, know. There are Bible-centered um, podcasts that don't even bring up the gospel. We give love to both sides. Tibi Domine Gloria Tibi Domine Gloria Tibi Domine Domine I believe that, that the freedom, freedom of, speech of speech is a universal, universal international right, right. That all opinions shall be tolerated, regardless if agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the freedom of expression, freedom of religion, not from it, freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually. I believe in the separation of church and state and corporation. I believe that truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts, as there are no absolute truths, except the Word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers have philosophized, and our founding fathers debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. No individual shall be be indemnified of criticism or mockery, for there is honesty in jest. 
I pledge that the ideas I share are my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race, and I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation. With their opinions being their own, with my opinions being my own, for association does not always equal shared beliefs. I pledge to perform in a professional, dignified manner, and, and to not bully, harass, or slander my fellow human creatures, to, to refrain from hate, hate anger, anger, sedition, vulgarity, harassment, pornography, pornography, cautioning that satire can at times be misinterpreted as such. I believe in the counter-speech doctrine that the remedy to negative, harmful speech is more positive, helpful speech, not enforced silence. That no person shall be denied access to social media which is the marketplace of ideas, and today's town square, that Section 230 privatizes communism and legalizes libel and stalking, and that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution because we are all constituents of the human party and humans are fallible. Amen. Pow! Pow! All right, you guys, settle in. Bad. It's going to be a good one today. Buckle up and get ready. We're talking about why it's all a big joke. Hmm. Free to call in if you want. 866-970-9997. You can always, uh, you know, contribute. It's the high priest and the high deacon coming at you live on our 120th episode. You have not taken a day off in 120 days. This is what happens when you have Jesus in your heart. You have boundless energy. And that's not that's not just lip service. Dude, I can't even like talk until I until I meditate. Yeah. Did you hear me do that first Hail Mary or the first couple and I messed up? I was like forgot the words. Yeah, I know. I'm the Hail Mary. That's your brain. You gotta kill that off. Destroy that. Make Be that shut up. Moment. Once that it's shuts right off, now. you're good. Yep. Help me on for good. Pose with the buzz with the man woman. Buzz with the woman. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother God, Prince of Not the Death. Amen. I can say it without even thinking now. That's the test. The podcast has begun. Oh, and by the way, when you hear that, I mean, don't be don't be a scum. Do your due diligence. Yeah, we're coming don't around. Forget to we're coming around with the uh, with the uh, you know the what's it? Oh, uh, the, the offer, basket, basket the offering. Yeah. This means subscribe. And like, listen, and I had bell. some of my, my best buddies were, were busting my chops this morning telling me you got two followers, blah, blah, blah. And they were also saying it was very boring. I've also heard, I don't understand it. I've heard a lot of things. Yeah. Well, I it's, mean, but, it, but, eh. but you know, no, no, no. I, I think that to the people who guided, no, no, to, oh, yeah. no, nothing against them. It's, no, I, no, love no, them. No, I love no, them. Yeah. It's because, you know, the people that we are meeting now. Uh yeah, they they listen to it and they do understand it. They do, yes. And actually, too, they also I like uh, the feedback they actually give us in mm-hmm. person. Yes, like- yes. Oh, by the way, there are other platforms. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Uh, we are on um Bitchute. Bitchute. We are on uh, obviously YouTube. Yes, and that's Spotify. the only one I want to say really, yeah. honestly. Bitchute, go on Bitchute because they they seem to be real. They seem to the not other be ones censoring are, anybody. The other ones are just, they put on algorithms. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, do do 120 episodes and, and to have, you know, not mm-hmm. be getting traction like you really should. What I, that, all that does is just uh, show. It just shows exactly what I need to show. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, improve the whole point. There's a rhyme and a reason for everything. Oh, and It doesn't course. hurt my feelings. Nope. But. It's pretty hard. Pretty difficult. When you you got the uh, the thick the thick skin of God, that's what does it. Let's get into it. All right. Ready? 
put that up? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Today is September twenty second. Oh my god, it's going wow. so fast. Tomorrow, Padre Pio oh. movie comes out. Yes. I'm excited for that. I know. I'm really excited for that. Today in Mass this morning, we're going to talk about um, the perplexed Herod. Hmm. He's perplexed because John the Baptist, uh, he got killed, right? Yep. And then, because he killed him. Well, yeah. Because of his weird dysfunctional relationship with his Wait, that, daughter-in-law that, or something? That, I thought it was stepdaughter. I don't know. I don't it's remember weird. now, actually. And then, so anyway, mm-hmm. he's doing that, that weirdness. And then... Yep. Uh, he kills John, and then all of a sudden he hears about wow, somebody, somebody is is like doing some miracles and crazy works. Who is this person? He's like, did John the Baptist come back to life? He's scared. So Ooh. it's Thursday. It's the twenty fifth week in ordinary time. By the way, mm-hmm. according to our Catholic Novo Ordo, Ordo calendar, I don't know what it is in the um, trad calendar. Oh yeah, that's a good. But I I love my traditional Catholics and I love traditional um Latin mass. I do. I prefer it. So who kept try um all right. So if the perplexed Herod who kept trying to see Jesus truly wants to know who he is, something more than t- detached curiosity and vanity is required. Christ is truly known only to those who look for him through the surrender of faith. Hear that, fellas? This is right to you. Anybody Mm. today who I was having a conversation with this morning, this actually pertains right to them. Isn't that crazy? Funny how it always seems to work that way. It's called detached curiosity. If you're detached, you're not going to find it interesting because you're detached from it. You don't understand it. But once you do, like when life kicks you in the you know where, Mm -hmm. that's when you listen to this show. (laughs) That's when you tune in. So Christ is truly known only to those who look for him through the surrender of faith. We cannot know, quote unquote, Jesus in any authentic sense without the commitment of faith. Lacking it, quote, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, end quote. We would be forever searching. Do you understand? Oh my God, dude, this is exactly what I was just talking about with these guys. Hilarious. This is like, how does it always seem to work that way? Yes. It really yeah. seems like whatever, like the day not planned ahead or whatever. And I'm going to just say this. Oh, 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 oh yeah. am I even in? Oh, I can't do the thing. Cause I'm like, cause I'm on the phone. Hold on. Let me turn my Bluetooth off. Oh, let me just say, sorry, mm-hmm. guys, we are live right now. I just wanted to say, uh, please tune into the show. This is uh, please right now. I'd like to talk to you right now. We could be doing, uh, a, a, uh, a, you know, a chat, Group mm-hmm. chat, same. Tune in. I'm talking to you. All right. Um, everything we're saying right now is pertaining to you. Anyway, so it is. Let's go into our our first reading of the day. All right, let's do it, dude. Hmm. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says who left. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. What profit has man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises and the sun goes down. Then it presses on to the place where it rises, blowing now toward the south. Then toward the north, the wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, yet never does the sea become full. To the place where they go, the river, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing one can say. The eye is not satisfied with seeing nor is the ear satisfied with hearing. What has been, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which you say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no resemblance of the men of old 
nor of those to come will there be any resemblance among those who come after them. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Psalm 90. And that, was, by the way, was gangster. Yes. Can't wait to break that down later. And then the uh, responsorial is, In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that is, is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in, your, in their sleep. The next morning, they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew. But every evening wilts and fades. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O oh Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Prosper the work out of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In, In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Got some singing for you. Here we go. All right. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs> I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Now from the Gospel of Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. Herod, the Tetrarch, heard ab about all that was happening. Is it the Tetrarch, like the tetrarch, like, like the pet, the patriarch, like the patriarch kind of thing? Like that's Ooh. probably something like that. That root word. I don't know. Mm, anyway, might, that's probably connected. Yeah. And he was greatly perplexed because some were saying John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets, has arisen. But Herod said, John, I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, <laughs> that's actually kind of funny, that gospel, in, a, I guess, a weird way for me. Right. Well, because you know what? This is, killed, by the way, this oh. is the part where we break down uh, what we just read. Yes. And also to add, we are not ordained priests or prophets, and we do not claim to be perfect either. Nope. But we are podcasters who have done our research. That's right. So I find it funny in a way because, yes. like, I mean, like we talked a little bit earlier about, like, he beheaded. John the Baptist because of his um I believe you're actually criticisms. Right. Yeah. Because of criticism from his Because he criticized. Dude, yeah. that that should tell you everything. You, like criticisms, I mean, yeah. I just got into trouble like that. That's a, where I was not tying it, but yeah. Yeah. I was tying it with John criticizing. People him. should just yeah, you gotta stop criticizing others. Because here's an exact way of like I guess I could say it like this a little let them the East let them here. live in the hell they wish to live in. Right? Yeah, and then I... It's like this, what we're doing right now. Yeah, it is. It's it's all good, you know? People, you don't mm -hmm. have to like it. You don't have to like the show. You don't have to understand it. Mm -hmm. our, all our yeah. all our old buddies from a past life, they don't have to understand it. Not they don't have to know what we're doing. Not even just in anybody's life. Not Anybody. everybody yeah, will yeah. understand it. That's because right. you know what? I get yes. it. Some people are the way they are. Mm -hmm. And it's because... 
some things haven't happened enough in exactly, their life. Exactly. That, and I'm not saying that and everybody God wants, has to. And God wants but, that to happen too, apparently. Right? It's a, it's your, I, I mean, think that it's everybody. Well, you have uh, free will. Well, yeah. And then it's like everybody's like time when they turn back or they, mm-hmm. or even just a little bit if they turn back. Right. Um, and you know, I got to say, I, I feel like at least in my life, every single moment was very significant. Meaning like when I look or think back on the times, I'm like, what was going on in my life? How was I feeling? Like, what was I experiencing? You know? Right. And then it's like, oh, you know what? In hindsight, it made perfect sense why I turned to God in that. Why? Because it's like I was lacking in something in my life, right? <laughs> Come to math. Don't wait for others to bring you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's... And I'm guilty of that. 100%. I right. only went to math in the recent months. Yeah. Oh, I'm just I dragged say, you. In the beginning, yeah, I would say the, probably the first time you, that's the only time I could say, yes, you dragged me to church. <laughs> now, just the fir- no, I'm being honest. The first just time? The first time, because I, I'm not going to lie to you, the first time. Dude, like, that's, eh. what, that's what I do. Eh. That's what I do. I go to all my old friends, yeah. and then I just like, I strong arm them, and I say, you're going to church with me now. I mean, yes. And no, the funniest no, part no. now. Is it, would but that no. be crazy if I did but that? But the funniest part I made them know that. that one time, and then it started breaking down the walls. Well, Other defenses? No. Because you know what? Like, at least with me, I don't know why, but it resonates with me. Show versus tell. Um, Grandpa taught me these wise words of wisdom when I was really young. Mm-hmm. When we were crabbing, and I, I, I saw a giant crab, and I was about telling him about it, and he was like, oh, yeah? Did you catch it? No, I missed it. Oh, he's like, I'm going to teach you a lesson now. I'm from Missouri, the show me state. I'm like, what does that mean? You're not. I'm like, you're not from Missouri either. What does that mean? He's like, show me, because so many people would, uh, you know, they would be fishing along the Mississippi River, get into Missouri, start telling these tales of giant fish that got away. Show me exactly. I'm like, oh wow, like at a young age, that's what he taught me. I think it was like maybe six, at the oldest. Ah, too bad they didn't have phones to take pictures at, at that point. Right. Which, you know, that's one of the things, the whole show versus tell thing. And here you can actually see the karma or uh, the East in this a little bit. Oh, yeah. Now Her- Herod killed John the Baptist, and now he's all paranoid about who the second coming, who this other person may be. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, as soon as you, <laughs> like, let's say you you are, are, drive to, dr- are driven to anger and murder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as you do it, you're not going to be satisfied. You're going to be like, "Oh my god, what I just cuz you in the end you're dead." Yeah. And I and you and, yeah. and and now you have to, you know what I'm saying? You have to it's like so stupid. It's, anyway, mm-hmm. vanity of vanities. Yeah. yeah. It's all vanity, right? Everything. That whole reading was like I love how they just all of it was worded and on top of that, how you read it. That may have actually made me uh, comprehend it even quicker, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it is. Just, it's so poetic. Oh. It's kind of like a Walt Whitman um, poem. Mm-hmm. There's there's a Walt Whitman poem uh, on. Hold on one second. OK, I'll break this down a little okay. bit while you do that. But like in a lot. OK, so I love when he talks about the sun and the generations. Right. Yep. How he brings both of them because they're back to back. And like it makes so much sense on like, yeah, there is. The sun will always rise and will always um, fall. Yes. No matter what. Just like one generation passes and another comes. So, in another word, whatever people of the past have said, like with uh, some of the prophets, right? Maybe nowadays some people look at it weirder, like whatever, or they only maybe listen to the old prophets because they think that the old is always the best. Okay. I understand that with movies, I'll say. The originals <laughs> are always the best. The remakes and sometimes the sequels are... Eh. But they still tell you... But, the, those prophets yeah. are still telling you what to do. They are. They were, te- they were telling you in a different way because but people weren't listening. But still, if you can figure it out and listen... Yeah. Like we were talking about that before. And I, that's what I'm bringing a little bit back to is that, like, yes, I will give that... I will give that a lot of credit on that idea. Like, if... <laughs> 
if the human scum didn't did listen to the prophet, yeah, we we would not had God would not have had to send his son to be sacrificed by the human scums of the earth. Yes. I love this is probably one of my favorite um passages. Yeah? Yes. I mean, I see Don't you I, think? I, I do see why. I like it I do like it a lot. Now, number one, you always talk about antitheses. Mm, I mean, we always, oh we always talk about antitheses. That's all there this was. is. This whole thing is, do you imagine like how how do all the lakes go to the ocean, but the ocean never or, fills yeah, up? Well, yeah, how, how that does is. that happen? I mean, isn't that crazy? This, this world, we don't even know. And I when, when it's gonna ooh. really when it's run gonna rain, we don't really know stuff, you know. Uh, and we think that the world's gonna end in twenty years. It's insane. So um. What? What were you going to say? I wanted to read some of this poem. I do. Oh, okay, it like yeah, really. Right. It's called Crossing Brooklyn Ferry by Walt Whitman. Flood tides below me. I see you face to face. Cloud of the West. Sun there half an hour high. I see you also face to face. Crowds of men and women attired in the usual costumes. How curious you are to me. On the ferry boats, the hundreds and hundreds I cross returning home and more curious to me than you suppose. And you that shall cross from shore to shore years hence are more to me and more in my meditations than you might suppose. The impalpable sustenance of me from all things at all hours of the day, the simple, compact, well-joined scheme, myself disintegrated, everyone disintegrated, yet part of the scheme, the similitudes of the past and those of the future the glory strung like beads on my smallest sights and hearings on the walk in the street and the passage over the river the current rushing so swiftly and swimming with me far away the others that are to follow me the ties between me and them the certainty of others the life love sight hearing of others Others will enter the gates of the ferry and cross from shore to shore. Others will watch the run of the flood tide. Others will see the shipping of Manhattan, north and west, and the heights of Brooklyn to the south and east. Others will see the, the islands large and small. Fifty years hence, others will see them as they cross, the sun half an hour high. A hundred years hence, or even so many hundreds of years hence. Others will see them, will enjoy the sunset, the pouring in of the flood tide, the falling back of the sea of the ebb tide. It avails not time nor, nor place. Distance avails not. I am with you, you men and women of a generation or ever so many generations hence. Just as you feel when you look on the river and sky, so I felt. Just as any of you is one of the living crowd, I was one of the living crowd. Just as you are refreshed by the gladness of the river and the bright flow, I was refreshed. Just as you stand and lean on the rail, yet hurry with swift current, I stood, yet was hurried. Just as you look at the, the numberless mass of ships and the thick stemmed pipes of steamboats, I looked. I too, many and many a time, crossed the river of old. I watched the twelfth month seagulls, saw them high in the air, floating with motionless wings, oscillating their bodies. Saw how the glistening yellow lit up parts of their bodies and left the rest in strong shadow. Saw the slow wheeling circles and the gradual edging toward the south. Saw the reflection of the summer sky in the water. Had my eyes dazzled by the shimmering track of beams. Looked at the fine centrifugal spokes of light round the shape of my head in the sunlit water. Looked at the haze on the hills, southward and southwestward. Looked on the vapor as it flew in fleeces tint tinged with violet. Looked toward the lower bay to notice the vessels arriving. Saw their approach, saw aboard those that were near me. Saw the white sails of sco schooners and sloops. Saw the ships at anchor, the sailors at work in the rigging or out astride the spars. The round masts, the swinging motion of the hulls, the slender serpentine pennants, the large and small steamers in motion, the pilots in the pilot houses, the white wake left by the passage, the quick tre tremulous whirl of the wheels, the flags of all nations, the falling of them at sunset, the scallop edged waves in the twilight, the land, the landled cups, the frolicsome crests and glistening. The stretch of far growing dimmer and dimmer, the gray walls of granite storehouses by the docks on the river, the shadowy group, the big steam tug closely flanked on each side of the barges, the hay boat, the belated lighter 
On the neighboring shore, the fires from the foundry chimneys burning high and glaringly into the night, casting their flicker of black contrasted with wild red and yellow light over the tops of houses and down into the clefts of streets. These are all else were to me the same as they are to you. I loved well those cities, loved well the the stately and rapid river. The men and women I saw were all near me, others the same, others who looked back on me because I looked forward to them. The time will come, though, I stop here to, today and tonight. What is it between us? What is the count of the scores of hundreds of years between us? Whatever it is avails not. Distance avails not. The place avails not. I too lived in Brooklyn. Of ample hills was mine. I too walked the streets of Manhattan Island and batched the waters around it. I too felt the curious, abrupt questionings stirs within me. In the day among crowds of people, sometimes they came upon me. In my walks home late at night or as I lay in my bed, they came upon me. I too had been struck from the float forever held in solution. I too had received identity by my body that I was, that I was, I knew was of my body and what I I should be. I knew I should be of my body. It is not upon you alone. The dark patches fall. The dark threw its patches down upon me. Also the best I had done seemed to me blank and suspicious. My great thoughts, as I suppose them, were that were they not in reality meager? Nor is it you alone who know what it is to be evil. I am he who knew what it is to be evil. I too knitted the old knot of contrariety, blabbed, blushed, resented, lied, stole, grudged, had guile, anger, lust, hot wishes I dared not speak. Isn't this the best uh, poem you've ever written, you've ever heard? It's one of them, right? I wish I'd written it. Walt, Walt Whitman. He's. Like, I know. Wow. Hold on. Let me keep going here. Mm-hmm. I am he who knew what it is to be evil. I too knitted the old knot of contrariety. Blabbed, blushed, resented, lied, stole, grudged, had guile, anger, lust, hot wishes I dared not speak, was wayward, vain. Ooh. It says that word in this. I'm so, I knew this poem. I admit. Greedy, shallow, sly, cowardly, malignant, the wolf, the snake, the hog, not wanting in me. The cheating look, the frivolous word, the adulterous wish, not wanting, refusals, hates, postponements, meanness, laziness, none of these wanting, was one with the rest, the days and haps of the rest was called by my nighest name by clear, loud voices of young men as they saw me approaching or passing, felt their arms on my neck as I stood or the the negligent leaning of their flesh against me as I sat, saw many I loved in the street or ferry boat or public assembly, yet never told them a word, lived the same life with the rest, the same old laughing, gnawing, sleeping, Played the part that still looks back on the actor or actress. The same old role. The role that is what we make it. As great as we like it. Or as small as we like. Or both great and small. Closer yet I approach you. What thought you have of me now? I had as much of you. I laid in my stores in advance. I considered long and seriously of you before you were born. Who is to know what should come home to me? Who knows, but I am enjoying this. Who knows for all the distance, but I am as good as looking at you now for all you cannot see me. Ah, what can ever be more stately and admirable to me than mast hemmed Manhattan river and sunset and scalloped edged waves and flood tide. The seagulls oscillating their bodies, the hay boat in the twilight and the belated lighter. What gods can exceed these that clasp me by the hand and with voices I love call me promptly and loudly by my nighest name as I approach? What is more subtle than this which ties me to the woman or man that looks in my face, which fuses me into you now and pours my meaning into you? We understand then Do we not what I promised without mentioning it? Have you not accepted? 
What the study could not teach, what the preaching could not accomplish, is accomplished. Is it not? Flow on, river flow, with the flood tide, and ebb with the ebb tide. Frolic on, crested and scalped-edged waves. Gorgeous clouds of the sunset, drench with your splendor, me, or the men and women generations after me. Cross from shore to shore, countless crowds of passengers. Stand up, tall masts of Manhattan, stand up. Beautiful hills of Brooklyn, Throb, baffled and curious brain. Throw out questions and answers. Suspend here and everywhere, eternal float of solution. Gaze, loving and thirsting eyes in the house of street or public assembly. Sound out, voices of young men. Loudly and musically, call me by my nighest name. Live, old life. Play the part that looks back on the actor or actress. Play the old role, the role that is great or small, according to one makes it. Consider you who pursue me, whether I may not in unknown ways be looking upon you. Be firm, rail over the river to support those who lean idly, yet haste haste with the hasting current. Fly on, seabirds, fly sideways, or wheel in large circles high in the air. Receive the summer sky. You water and faithfully hold it to all downcast eyes of time to take it from you. Diverge, find spokes of light from the shape of my head or anyone's head in the sunlit water. Come on, ships from the lower bay, pass up or down. White-sailed schooners, sloops, lighters, flaunt away flags of all nations. Be duly lowered at sunset. Burn high your fires, foundry chimneys. Cast black shadows on nightfall. Cast red and yellow light over the tops of the houses. Appearances, now or henceforth, indicate what you are. You necessary film. Continue to envelop the soul. About my body for me? And your body for you, be hung out divinest aromas. Thrive, cities, bring your freight, bring your shows, ample and sufficient rivers, expand, being then, which none else is perhaps more spiritual. Keep your places, objects, than which none else is more lasting. You have waited. You always wait, you dumb, beautiful ministers. We receive you with free sense at last and are insatiated henceforward. Not you anymore shall be able to foil us or without yourselves from us. We use you and do not cast you aside. We plant you permanently within us. We fathom you not. We love you. There is perfection In you also, you furnish your parts toward eternity. Great or small, you furnish your parts toward the soul. That's it. I know it's long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Once I got like halfway, I was like, I can't go. You know, I can't stop. Mm. But but, but what it just... When I read this, I think that Walt Whitman crosses crosses Brooklyn Ferry poem. Because it, it, it doesn't matter. Look at it. You think about these people that are going to come after you. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Think about uh, the, the same way they think about us. We think about them. Yeah. It's all the same. And I, I say sometimes, you know, like, but like people are, you know, death is, is going to be, is death that bad or whatever it is? Or, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's not going to be that, that bad because before, before your, before life, was it that bad? I mean, did you really care? No, you didn't. You didn't care. You're fine. It's going to be the same way. It really is. And nothing. And like that. And I know what? Oh, the last thing on the thing that I wanted to really, really say is like the, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear satisfied with hearing. Because like. Being that, I guess, if you look at the par- all this, this first reading, and it, like it means, it could mean, like, yeah, whatever you, whatever was in the past doesn't matter. What's in the future doesn't meaning because nothing, like that second paragraph in the first reading where they go into, um, there is no remembrance of the men of old. Nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them, right? So in it, I'm hearing it as nobody's going to remember the men of the past. 
Because no one is going to want to hear that no matter what. Because everybody wants to keep, per se, moving forward or moving ahead. But how is that possible when this line here says, even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that precede us. The ideas have always been there. For instance, the best one we bring up a lot, Facebook, social mm -hmm. media. Yep. I guarantee you, in some shape or form, there was a social media idea in every ancient civilization. It's not necessarily meaning on a device that we consider a cell phone or even a phone. What it could have even been is just cryptic message it, Messages between people. Social let's, let, media connection there. Let's do some venerables or we're never going to do this show. That we're not going to get through it. We got And we got to get to mass. Yeah. All right. So, so time for the venerable, venerable mentions, mentions of the day. An almost blind cappuccino. Almost. St. Ignatius of Santia. St. Ignatius of Santia was an Italian Franciscan Capuchin priest. His original name was Lorenzo Maurizio Belvisotti. He chose to serve as a sacristan and as the novice master of the Capuchins. He also devoted his time to caring for sick people in hospitals. When war broke in Piedmont, he volunteered to help the injured. He did all of his tasks with penance, patience, sorry, patience and humility amidst his condition of being almost blind. Wow. Also in the Venerables for September 22nd in the year of our Lord, 2022, St. Thomas multiplic multiplication of, uh, of corn. What? Huh? St. Thomas of Villanova, called the father of the poor, is known for being a miracle worker, especially if the poor will benefit from it. One day, a widow with several children went to him to ask for a bushel of corn. He told the men helping him to give the woman some corn. The man, after going to the storage area, said that there was no more corn. Oh, I already know what's going to happen. He asked them to check oh, again, boy. and their men returned with the same answer. He went to the storage area, and to the amazement of his men, the room was found to be full of corn. The woman went home with two sacks of corn. St. Thomas is honored every September 8th, and on his old feast of September 22nd. Oh. I'm, say, I'm like, I feel like I've heard it. Like, not the corn Did you thing. really? I'm like, but I feel like I heard of him before. I'm like, why do I know him? <laughs> doctor of the church candidates. A doctor Ooh. of a church is a person whose teaching on faith has been deemed sound and a benefit to the church mm. through, through their writing, study, or research. The, Catholic, the church has bestowed the title to only 36 saints, and there are several candidates, quote-unquote, who are being considered to receive the title, including St. Thomas of Villanova, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Louis-Marie Green, Green Neon, mm. St. Gertrude the Great, St. Bridget of Sweden, and Julian of Norwich, who has not been formally canonized nor beatified. Also, mm. September 22nd is the Feast of the Martyrs of the Theban Legion. St. Mauritius, St. Candidus, St. Exuperius, St. Victor, and Companions. These soldiers belonging to the Theban, Theban Legion of Maximian. Oh, you know that one? Theban Legion of uh, Maximian Hercules. Hercules were exterminated because they refused to go to Gaul to persecute Christians. Some soldiers of the Legion refused to celebrate in honor of the gods and were martyred. It is said that they numbered 6,666 men who were martyred in mass. Whoa. You got to give it up to the tradition of the Catholic church. I love this. <laughs> it's awesome. It also, had to be that number, right? Venerable mention a history uh, historian bishop, mm -hmm. Blessed Otto of Freising. He was an Austrian Cistercian bishop. When he was a monk, he founded an abbey which became the center of education and agriculture. He is widely acclaimed for being a historian. 
Two of his most important books are The History of the Two Cities and Deeds of Emperor Frederick. He also participated in the Second Crusade, which was a big failure. He was Whoa. never formally beatified, although the Roman martyrology labeled him Beatus. Also in the Venerables, one 123-year-old hermit, St. Fiorenzo the Venerable. St. Florentius was a priest and hermit. According to Tradition, was the brother of St. Florian. He was also jailed for his faith. Escaping from his guards, he arrived in Gaul, now France, where St. Martin of Tours obtained him as a priest. Ordained, sorry. Then he retired to Mount Glana, where he hunted snakes and performed miracles. His reputation for holiness attracted many followers. It is said that he died at 123 years of age. Wow, that's... How, to live off a of snake for that long. Yes. Although I how, do like how they said that he retired and then did that. Meaning like he didn't just like he didn't just become a priest and then hide. He he became a priest, did his duty, then when he was he was like, Okay, I um I've been doing this for however many years, I'm tired. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like it's time for me to retire. Let me uh let me go into a cave and uh hunt snakes and perform miracles. And lived to be 123. That is insane in a cool way. Like, you don't I have mean, the right that, amount of water in there. You don't have the pro- for proper audio. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, it there's might, some more martyrs. Know. Oh, yeah. Silesian martyrs of Madrid and Seville. Blessed Enrique Saiz, Apar- Abarchio and companions. This group of 63 martyrs of the Spanish Revolution were beatified in 2007. 62 Ooh. were male and one was female. All were mentioned of the Salesians of Don Bosco. Except for one lay person. 26 of them were Salesian priests. 30 were Salesian brothers or clerics. Three were Salesian aspirants or postulants. Two were lay Salesian uh, cooperators, including the only woman in the group. And one was a Diocian priest who was also a salesian cooperator okay can't cooperate man Uh. don't you dare cooperate (laughs) uh a nun who was sexually assaulted this is the last venerable mention of the day servant of god maria isabel bogata uh today is her death anniversary Uh she was a colombian nun from the carmelites of mother candelario of course. She was assigned to serve in a nursing home in Venezuela. She manifested a great love for God in the service of the poorest and most needy. She was attacked in the dining area. The men sexually assaulted and killed her. She's being considered as a possible martyr of charity. That's horrible. Jeez. Well, that was a bad way to end that one. I know. Wow, that was really depressing there. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Oh my God. Well, let's uh let's learn some some stuff, I guess. Let's learn All some right. uh, some words, right? Word or two. Dot com. It's time for the Latin word of the day. Woo! Oh yeah. Oh, this let's is do it. This is an obvious one, but I don't know if this guy's gonna be getting it. Probably not. He's an obvious one. What is this, Gangi? Come on, man. I said it today. Um, it's a title of the show. It's a show title. You're t- what were we talking about? Van- vanities, vanity? right? Weren't we talking yeah, about vanities? Well, vanity, but I don't know what the Everything other word is, is vanity, dude. Everything. Everything's all BS. It's like my uncle told me on his deathbed. It's all a sick joke. So is that what... Um- Oh, it, 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 yeah, omnia vanitas. Whatever. If you ever hear me say it, I'm gonna, I'll am i be saying this for the rest of my life. It's all nothing. It's all just... All things are vanity or emptiness. Everything. Okay. No, I, I got vanity you think, from but, the second one. What, I didn't know what, what, do, you, was, what yeah. do you think about that, though? I mean, well, is it just a pessimistic outlook on life or what? I think that in the end, all of the worldly possessions and the things that you strive for, it just sounds so empty to me now at this point right now. Because none of it matters to it me, really. Because the only thing that really should matter, like, nothing else matters. That's the one, like, 
thing about the hermit people or the people who go away and live in the, all that stuff, like the saints that done it. But there's an element of weakness there. I there think. Is, no, there there is. You got to stay in the but, fight. You got to stay in yeah, fight. Yeah, you have to stay in the fight. But the element of it going out there, living amongst like the nature and the world of Sounds like nice. How, I love it. it mm, yeah, well, not only nice. It's just think about it. Really, two thousand years ago, what technologies are the same as today? Just about nothing. Meaning, the most similar lifestyle. 2,000 years ago today would be living in the middle of the woods. They didn't have probably, I would say, 99% of the luxuries and things that we have today that we all take for granted. Like the, like the stability of the roof over our heads in any place you live. What were theirs? How, how good was it? You know, and anything. Mm -hmm. I think living in the sometimes going away like that is the most almost holy thing. But Dude, it sounds I beautiful. Do, it I sounds do beautiful. Agree, I do disagree to the point of like you still got to be out there. It sounds beautiful. Still vanitas, go vanitatum, omnia vanitas. To expand on the omnia vanitas, let's add two more words in front of it. Vanitas, vanitatum. So again, in vanity. Vanity, whatever, and like it's emptiness and the same thing really as the last one, right? Vanity of vanities. All is vanity yeah. and utterly meaningless. The sooner I mean, the sooner you realize this, the sooner you'll find God. This is really, you know, society was created to get your mind with the fact you're gonna die someday. You understand? Well, I think that's easy for most people to understand, I hope. I mean, seriously, everything in society, what does it really matter? Turn on, just turn on, it doesn't even matter what news station you watch or listen to. Turn it on and ask yourself, what are they talking about right now that actually interferes with my daily life? Not trying to sound selfish. Not trying to sound like heartless or anything like that. It's entertainment. I, I hate to say in a in a thick way, time it's entertainment. Everything I, is entertainment. Going out to it. eat, going out to eat's entertainment. It's all waiting to die. Everything. Driving around from point A to point B, going to church. I mean I mean everything is. Every, and, 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 and and the church the church thing. Mm hmm It's communion, entertainment meditation uh it, it you know you come out peaceful and then you're able to not you don't like focus on all these other stupid things that you need to, for entertainment to coddle yourself to soothe yourself so that you don't like yeah. go nuts or something mm -hmm. basically right i mean and it's just like wow like every it just everything in life like nothing really matters no. Be, and I'm not trying to sound negatively you're about it. You're going to be gone. Your kids are going to be gone. Their kids are going to be gone. Their kids their kids are going to be gone. I and mean, they will never, like you never had, had existed ever in the I first think place. Is like a, I think most people, not everybody or whatever, I could ask probably a people like, okay. who's your great, great grandfather? His name. Let me, let me, let me do this. Do you ever watch the comedy channel, Comedy Central, and then you watch the old friars club where they're you know they're they're what is it called when you're when you're like making fun of somebody they got the one person there oh, a, roast. a roast right yeah a roast okay right. well when you have a roast when you uh, watch those old roasts is like dean martin all the different guys you ever watch that yeah well dean martin's one that i like think that. about w listen to when the comedians are talking and who they're talking about all the people of the day that they're make that they're commenting about and how that goes right over your head and you don't really care, do you? They're talking about oh this guy and that guy, right? It really mm -hmm. it really apparent when when I'm watching old Dean Martin roasts about how fleeting life is and how nothing else matters, and that's just a generation ago, and we don't even care. I mean, like I was saying there before this, tell me who tell me the name and of your great great. Great grandfather, right? I don't know the great grand. I, I do. I do know my um my great grandfather was Giuseppe Yanotti. Mm. 
Okay. I do know yeah. that. But like, you get what I mean? Like but I, I don't said, know his dad's name. No. I said like, like I yeah. said, like probably I extended it because I figured mm-hmm. you, you actually did. But like, I would say probably seven out of 10 people I would ask. Yes. Just on the street of New York. Like, mm-hmm. who's your great grandfather? What was his name? You know what I mean? How many of them actually would know that? I really, that's kind of like a test I would like to. Well, I saw it on the Ellis Island thing. Yeah. So that's why I know it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So let's do some um, Catholic Twitter. All right. Catholic Twitter. Consolation for sinners. The revival of merits. A thread. Mm Mm-hmm. Just one mortal sin destroys all the merits that the soul has ever heaped up. No matter how long you have been living a life of justice, of charity, of humility, and so on. But that is not the end. Theologians commonly teach that those good works, once alive but destroyed by mortal sin, are recovered once the state of grace is recovered through perfect condition or sacramental confession. Like the prodigal son, the sinner receives a full revival of previous merits. According to the most common teaching, the sinner's previous merits are fully revived, both as to grace and as to the glory upon repentance. The sinner should take solace and encouragement in this, and that he does not start from step one. Let us conclude with St. Thomas, who gives us the simple yet consoling words, opera mortificata per poententium. Revi- Revisient? Revisient. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what that... What does that mean? What did you take from that? Did you take anything from that stuff? What does that mean? That's what I want. I know the what biggest that means. thing I want to know. I think I, I do, because I prepared it in the Latin word of the day. Opera mortificata per poentetium. Um, what would it mean? works mortified by repentance? Okay. Wow. Well, I think Hold that on. dude was basically saying like, uh, there's like you, there's hope for you if you become start yeah. doing the right thing, right? And you'd start actually doing. You like have grace to work for repentance. Thing, you know, you do do things throughout your life to. Well, I mean, just saying like. Hmm. For in, I, I'll say you have to work I for like repentance. This. Yeah, you can't just make amends and say I'm sorry. No, because that means nothing. Because you ninety percent of the time people will do it again. But what I mean by that also is like when you make amends, saying something like, like or for repentance, you know. Yes. Recognizing your fault in it, not just recognizing the other fault, and then saying that I know I wronged you. How can I right the wrong I caused you? Right. Don't look at what they did to cause you maybe to say or do whatever. Right. Just look at you. But that's going to be hard work. Just as he said, it's hard work to, uh, for repentance. Dude, some of these people on Catholic uh, Twitter. Oh, no. And on Twitter in general. Oh, no. They are have masters in clickbait, not PhDs. This person says PhD and says she and her in her bio. And so she makes up a fake thing that she knows like it's going to incite people. See, right. Look at she goes. I am sickened. She, she retweeted her tweet. Look, uh, you have one day left on Earth and a hundred thousand dollars. A home free black trans sex worker asked you to pay for their bottom surgery, and a disabled white conservative vet asked you to pay for a prosthetic leg. Who do you give the money to? Ten percent bottom surgery for trans, and then ninety percent. I'm a white supremacist. Number one. That whole thing is a Photoshop, right? She, uh-huh. it's not even real. Right, Why right. doesn't that person get banned for inciting that stuff? It's like psycholog. They know how to play people psychologically. I mean, and they why get, don't and they, they get, get it? I don't know. Because they get rewarded for it, and then all the other people in there start fighting each other. I that that's what's really confusing because it's like they're the one that. Per se, how Started. I look at it. And then they yeah. try to pretend like they're not. But because why did the one that replies get all the, uh, you know, all the backlash or cancellation or any of it? Because why? 
Why it makes no sense to me on why the person who started it doesn't also get it. Yeah. So weird. Um, oh, there's some crazy stuff. The Crusades never ended. Look at this. Oh, no. Did you see this? French Catholics pray while a migrant plays loud music to purposely disturb them. Uh-huh. The alpha in the group has had enough. What is this? Hold on a second. Look. Fansenzo.com. Outstanding! Oh my god, Catholic Twitter is crazy. I mean, in that video, it appears it has not ended. I think this this is actually Catholic uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I got this from. But I think MTG, this is MTG. You know. Mm, Yeah. Most Republicans shoot. Most Republicans support declaring the United States a na- uh, Christian nation. New polling shows the appeal and limits of a Christian nationalist message. See that? Uh, I'm not really. See that? I am not liking. See what's that, going on with this? To be honest. But do you see what's going on with this? So the people, the same people, by the way, who will be behind that are going to be telling you you're wrong for going to church. You know that. It's crazy, I mean, they right? Are. It's crazy. Yeah. Totally, totally it's multi-level uh, manipulation at its finest. Multi-level. Um, watch this. Look at this. This is something that everybody should know about. Digital soldiers and warriors. Will you remain silent? Look at this. When the leading true voice for the church in China is silenced and betrayed, global solidarity online rally for Cardinal Zen and Jimmy Lai. Screenings. Witness and expert Q and A Saturday, the twenty fourth. This coming Saturday, at mm-hmm. two p.m. Is that Central? Yes, yeah, Central USA. Eight p.m. London. RSVP here at uh, Silence for the number four Christ at Gmail dot com for Zoom info. It's good to know, right? It is. I mean, it's a terror. Terrible thing they're gonna do to probably him. What are they? What are they gonna do to him? Well, I mean, all they I gotta, gotta look say, more into it. All they gotta say is, uh, he's in a communist country, going to court, and he's a Catholic. Yeah, he's. Yeah. You, you know what I'm trying to say here yeah, without yeah. saying it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Internet censorship is more consequential to humanity than climate change, but y'all ain't ready for that conversation. Oh. Oh my God! I like that one. That, that 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 was a little in your face there. <laughs> that is that is the truth right there. That is the truth. Look at these TikTokers, man. Oh. When are we gonna start banning MAGA Republicans from establishments? If you're wearing the shirt and you're wearing the hat, don't come in my store. Don't come in my restaurant. Kick them out of the fucking bank. I don't care. They're repping it like a gang. And anywhere else, gang violence isn't tolerated. So why is it for them? They're just uneducated white people. Kick them out. Fadsandso.com Teachers need to be allowed to teach. I'm a parent, and I'm sorry to all you parents out there, but you do not get a say in your child's teacher's lesson plans. I spent thousands of dollars on a degree and my educator's license, and I would be gosh darned if parents tried to tell me how to write my lesson plans that I literally went to school to learn how to write. You know, if a parent wants to have that much say in their kid's education, then you know what? You probably need to homeschool them. Outstanding! Pow! Hmm. That last one, you can take either side. Yes, you can. It. You can take either side, yeah. That I, know, I saw that too. Vegas, right up to I, the I end. I can't even answer. I was going to say that she's not self-aware because she's young and has no like real life experience. Right. Um, and then the, the that the uh, parents would probably know better. 
a little, a little bit better. Some things that they could offer insight and wisdom to her that would help her in her teachings. Yeah, they're um, the because they can't. You can't be arrogant thinking that you know everything because you went to school, right? So, but there is a there is a a truth to if you're really going to get that in my in my business, you should maybe just homeschool. Yeah, there is an element of that that I believe is true. Um, and then, but the first person. Not at all. What I thought was hilarious is that she is an uneducated white person. And then that and and she at the end outed herself. She's seen all that bad stuff. She goes, They're just uneducated white people. Because she everything she said was uneducated. It was very funny. Anyway. I mean, yeah, mm. and with the teacher thing, it's just that one I'm still I'm not sure how to feel on her opinion. Right. Of it. Right. But I see it could go either way. And it's nice. It's actually nice to me that somebody is neutral like so neutral like that. Anybody could play that video on the left and right and make it their own. You don't have to edit anything on that because it's so you could just leave it like that and then just preach it on whatever news network and everybody's going to believe it however they uh, lean. Yeah. That's just it. So, um, you know, the Padre Pio movie comes out tomorrow. Mm hmm. Oh I'm yeah! I'm excited for that. That's like, <sighs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I can't wait. No, I'm not. I will say this: looking I did forward a little bit of uh, like looking up things on it. Yes, they're not giving it the good like these oh, good ratings. Good review? No, I'm not. Well, you know what totally it is? Worried, you know what it is though? It's like our buddies. You know, in the previous life, mm-hmm. they don't see everything clearly, right? They don't know. Right. So it's that same thing. You're is a worldly secular audience. They're not going to find it interesting. They're not going to know. They're not going to. You know what I'm that, saying? That's how I'm taking it because, like, so. But for us people that like, you know, what I'm saying mm. we know we, that we know what's up. A lot of Catholics are going. I think Catholics in general are going to love this. Oh, I do. Too. So it, however many Catholics there are in the world, mm-hmm. expect them to watch it. It would be just the same idea of like the passion of the Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, realistically, the only people that actually thought it was the you know might like, as well lock it in. At least this amount of people are going to watch it. So let's yeah. watch. They they released like a couple more clips. We want we want we put we played one clip. Mm-hmm. Um, they released four more clips. So I, I'm going to play two today and then two tomorrow, which is the day I think. Well, Saint his day. Padre Pio Day. Yeah, tomorrow. So let's watch two, two more tomorrow. clips. Here we go. Check it out. Fansenzo.com.
Southern Italy. Outstanding. Pow! It's Southern Italy, bro. You know? It's Southern Italy and there's communism and I understand what's going on. It's it's real stuff. That's why people, you know, they don't have any attention spans anymore. Mm, no. No. What's going on? You know why you know why people don't have any attention spans? Because and, and people it's all it's all vanity and BS. Nobody could say that more than what's going on right now with Biden in the White House, man. You know, uh, I mean I listen, uh-oh. I I don't wanna I don't wanna be critical I don't wanna be too critical. Correct, correct. I don't. Yeah. Man, but look at this montage of videos. It makes me critical. Bad. Enzo.com. Compared to Democratic that, rally, though. we're making real progress. We passed the Inflation Reduction Act to bring down costs, the bipartisan infrastructure law to rebuild America, the American Rescue Plan to bring our economy back, and so much more. But the extreme MAGA Republicans want to take it all back. You know, they're talking about cutting Social Security and Medicare, banning abortion access across the country. We need to elect Democrats this November and fight back and keep moving forward for the American people. So join us. We need you. Please join us. Fatsandso.com. Hate never fully goes away. And when given any oxygen, it comes out from under the rocks. In the last few years, it's been given much too much oxygen in our politics on our media and on the internet. Too much hate, all for power and profit. Too much hate that's fueled extremist violence that's been allowed to fester and grow. You know, as a result, our very own intelligence agencies, our own intelligence agencies in the United States of America have determined that domestic terrorism rooted in white supremacy is the greatest terrorist threat to our homeland today. Enough. What is he doing there? Why does he keep uh, doing Mr. President, that thank you. Funny At the end of like, such a momentous event, it seems like he's joking. The word "thank you" seems else, right? kind of inadequate. But it for all the like millions I just think he's joking with whose lives will be saved. For the communities where life will be transformed, thank you. So thank you, President Biden, for your outstanding... Outstanding. You are more aware of this than anyone. Some people ask whether you are fit for the job. And when you hear that, I wonder what you think. Watch me. I mean, honest to God, that's all I think. Watch me, watch me. <laughs> watch me, watch me. Watch me, watch me. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. <laughs> watch me, watch me. At the end of such a momentous It does event, look funny, though, right? Watch me, watch me. Kind of inadequate. But for all the millions... I don't know, outstanding. man. Outstanding. <sighs> I'm over the fighting and stuff. <sighs> There's no point. It's not, it's not going to matter. Because you know, like it's to because me. Because nothing else matters. Who are we to worship the men, or not even worship, but hold them up to think that they're going to do anything? They're human, just like us. Right. They're no better. Some of them are probably worse. Let's do the Fulton Sheen All wisdom. Right. Wisdom of Fulton Sheen. Fulton Sheen Die. wisdom. September twenty second. If. It be true that the world has lost its respect for authority. It is only because it lost it first in the home. By a peculiar paradox, as the home loses its authority, the authority of the state becomes tyrannical. Ooh. Well, well that you, is interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. <laughs> wow. So if you don't pay, if you don't, if you don't mind your P's and Q's to your mommy and your daddy, you're not going to be able to accept. Getting, and that is why I think... And that, you're going to be like, yeah. oh, it's so tyrannical. No, it's not. Wow. It's not as tyrannical as you think. And you know what? That's Actually, interesting. Hold on, I have a new... Al- that makes me realize a lot of stuff yeah. about myself right now, man. Wow. I might have a new outlook even on some of the, and like, hear me out, mm-hmm. some of the Democrats. Yep. Why? Well, look here. 
What would you expect? Like, you remember the show Nanny 911 or Super Nanny like that? They would have, like, a nanny come in to, like, where the children are terrible. They're, like, little monsters. Right. And um, they would come in and then reform them and make them listen to their parents again, right? They all The kids always complain in the beginning. You're mean. You're blah, 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 blah. Whatever. You're a dictator. But And by the way, let's... They uh, might have to do that. That's what the government might be doing right now. Because guess what? There is the lack of authority or respect for authority. So maybe they have to almost lock us down. So we understand authority again. Do you get where I'm going with that? Because like we lost authority, but also I kind of feel like they're the ones that pushed the whole like, you know, secularism, which I think definitely pushed the lack. I think I definitely I've done this and I'm absolutely guilty of this. I've gotten in my head and I've fought with police officers and talked bad to them. Been a been a jerk. Oh, I think. And you know what? I think everybody's had one incident. You know what? I think I think. Um, and I'm not a bootlicker or anything like that, but I do think well, yeah. now I have a I have a new found respect for the police, and I actually genuinely do have a respect for the badge. Mm-hmm. I think that if you're wearing that badge and you're out there and you're dealing with that every day, I think that I, I you deserve the respect. Oh, and speaking of that, hold on. Let me. Uh, can I? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hold on one second. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. So, talking more on that Fulton Sheen top topic there. I mean, I do think that in a weird, a very, 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 very weird, obscure way, that some of these uh, Democratic leaders, not all, not all, not all, but some, probably a very, very small amount. Um, I believe that they. Uh, there's someone doing it because maybe they have to correct the wrongs. However, the wrongs I feel like could have came from them because they were the policy makers, a lot of them, in the past when all the secularism came into play. Although it's one of those things of like, I don't know if that's what the right thing to do is. But I will say that I do believe a lot of this stems from this whole secular society and uh, falling away from the church, even. There is a a, uh, almost taught slash understandable respect that is given there. For instance, we, I will say that most of us in in the church, we all respect our priest. And it's a, it's a thing of where, like, even your pastors or your ministers, even in any any Christian faith uh, part, sect, like, they all respect in the highest regard, I would say, their priests, their ministers, their pastors, uh, the deacon, whoever. Whoever is their leader of the congregation, per se, people, I feel, respect them and hold them up. And just like with the police officers, I will say that, yeah, there is an element to where the badge does need to be respected. There is also an element to where they are also human. They are also fallible, just like every single one of us. So it's one of those weird moments where it's like, could it be, could you be, a bootlicker by just list, just obeying the police like that. But is there also an element of where it has to be done to a degree? Like to where, you know, they went through, they went through their training and all their things they had to do. And if we're supposed to respect the priest and things like that, well, I guess the same could be applied for the police officers. And... I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe this whole this whole Catholic thing giving me a different outlook in life. I will say that. I mean, definitely making me. Uh, I don't know. It's making me reconsider a lot of things I've thought of in the past, or even even done. And main thing is that I don't understand how I got so caught up in the emotions of life and everything because. It just, it doesn't matter. 
And I'm not really trying, I am not at all trying to sound negative about it or depressed about it or any of that. It's just the time here and the people you meet while you're here alive. I cherish those moments. I cherish the people I met. I love them. I love a lot of the moments I've had with everyone in my life. But there are times where, you know, like those people have left my life for a reason. And the best thing I can at least say is that it's uh, maybe for a rightful reason. I don't totally know. I just know that uh, I guess things change in life. And sometimes whether you're ready for it or not, it's going to happen. And right, and lately, the going to church, it has actually has been helping me, and it actually makes me feel like I'm actually like fulfilled in my life. Like there's actual things in my life that I'm really happy about. And not to say that I was, you know, not happy in life, but I feel like I'm almost finding the true happiness in life. And regardless of what your beliefs are, I only ask that you leave the open mind to entertain it. Because you never know. I was the one that was not wanting to do this. I did not want to go to church. And the first time he really, in a way, I didn't want to go to the church, but not because I didn't. It was more of a, I was just closed minded. Just thought I knew it. Thought like when I went to church all the other times in my life that, oh, it's just, a, it's nothing. It's, it, it doesn't matter, but that's the whole thing. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just holding on to it because I feel like the other people in there, in that, in our church, they kind of understand it. Meaning like they understand the whole, how can I put it? Like, uh, nothing matters. Like nothing in, in their in the their intimate lives actually like matters in a macro level. Cause that is part of the reading says like the people of the past won't be the men of the past won't be remembered. And uh, neither will the ones in the future or the ones who come after that. So it's really comes down to it like his being being angry about anything, being even in the emotion, in emotions like that. Is it even worth it? Because personally, I don't think it is. It's just like a why, why do it? And like have it consume valuable time that I believe you could spend here. Like the time with a good friend or a family member or whatever it may be. I think that this whole point of life is to just be as, to be at much peace as possible. Not necessarily happiness, because I, I guess I look at happiness as a short-term type thing. Like, it's an emotion, so it's meant to go come and go. While I feel like peace is almost like being, or uh, there you're of it. It's not necess It's a feeling, but it's not an emotion. It's something you feel, but you don't like. Uh, how am I trying to say it? You don't. It does not exhibit physical signs. Like when somebody's angry, they'll start. They'll raise their voice. They'll start. Um, maybe even cursing or they'll start hitting things or whatever. Then you have, of course, people who get sad. Like when you get sad, you may cry. You may like make no like all that. And that's fine. But when you're at peace, it's like, n oh, I don't want to say nothing. You do nothing, but there's nothing to do. Like, being at peace is, like, of just a straight up, like, it's a feeling, and it's something that I just always want to feel. 
Because without that peace and ma and like peace of mind or just peace in life, it seems like it always feels like the world is just crashing in on me and just well, it's not it's not enjoyable. It's almost like it's all it's just it's almost torturous. Because I just think of like going through how I went through life before and it's like just being angry about stupid things. Being like getting so worked up over what an individual does, says, or whatever. Or a group of individuals. Personally, I think now, like, if you're not, if you're like, you can think, you can have your opinion all you want. I mean, I'm going to have mine, of course. And like, you can have your opinions of the opposition or the other side. But like, realistically, they're just practicing the same exact right that you are having your own opinion of them and them having an opinion of you. Where it crosses the line nowadays, of course, is where it comes with the censorship and cancellation and things like that. I mean, I don't feel like there's any need to be going after anybody's personal things in their life just because you disagree with something that is done, said, or it's a part of or whatever. Like, somebody has a belief and they think that they should be able to be canceled and just can't have a voice on social media can't can't do anything like that and just think about it that's social media right now that's a total like um luxury of life meaning like it's not a necessity you don't need social media to survive and if you do then you may want to consult with somebody about that and i mean just with that being said, like there, there's no real need for fundamental living or existence to be on social media. I think that if people got away from it, I think things would change a lot in this world. But at that same very time, I mean, I get that it's an entertainment aspect, but it, there's got to be a line to where it becomes... Uh, how would I almost put it? Like, there's got to be a time to where the entertainment becomes bad for you or become destructive or harmful because I don't think that we were meant to be that distracted of life and then to the level of like, um, social media and whatnot. I think that like we were, yeah, we were probably we were meant to have somewhat of a distraction, like you know, having a family, raising kids, or um, oh, working, um, going out, doing whatever like that. But I'm not necessarily sure if it was like it was meant to be so abstracted or abstract. Or distant, like, just just the fact that, like, I realize, like, the TikTok videos and, like, YouTube short videos or whatever they're called, that they're popular and whatnot, like, oh, and, like, just, like, Snapchat as well. I get that it's popular. I get that it's a, it's a short video, so it sums up things sometimes or whatever. But then I start seeing one that say, like, you know, oh, reaction, reaction to such and such, part one. Okay, well, then why didn't you just make a regular video instead of making shorts? Like that. I so mean, long. it's just like, yeah, and I've just been going. Have you been actually? Yes, I have been. Entertaining? Yeah. So, I mean, to finish off what I was saying here before he came back, welcome back, sir. Um, <laughs> I didn't get good news. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Didn't get any good news or anything. But no, oh, it's all okay. good. Whatever. Um, either way, what I was just talking about is how social media is such a distraction of life, and I understand that um, like things in life are to get your mind off of death, right? Mm -hmm. That you're gonna die. But I really do believe that this social media thing is way too much of a distraction. 
It becomes, a, instead of an entertainment, right? It becomes harmful and destructive because the people are getting filled with anger and, and emotions like that, where it just, oh, I was saying earlier that what I love about going to the Catholic church now is that I'm feeling peace. And unlike happiness or sadness or anger, it's not an emotion that fades away, like comes on and fades away. Peace is a feeling, being of it, not feeling it totally like that. It doesn't exhibit any physical signs. When somebody's really, really sad, they may cry, right? Mm -hmm. When somebody's very, very an or angry, they may raise their voice. Mm -hmm. They may even hit something. Yes. But when you're at peace, you do nothing. And I was tying into that life has its life doesn't mean anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like nothing like matters. Ju like just now, I just shot my shot. I shot it the best I could. But because of liability reasons, nope. And you know what? It's okay. Because you know what? It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. No. So now I'm thinking of just like letting all of that just whatever. You can, Adios. A little bit, yeah. Because guess what? Like, people. It, why spend why, thousands of dollars trying to fight it, get a bag? I'm not doing that. No, and then There's no point. It, Let it and go, then, and then put it into a like even like a macro to like just to any anything. Why do people? Why get so upset over one person's opinion that may differ? When in all reality, what does their opinion matter to you? What how does that interfere or affect your life? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that. You're allowed to have your opposing opinion, per se, because of the freedom of it. So the fact that they censor you on the social media stuff, and that's supposed to be a distraction to get your mind off of dying the way it is. I'm like, I think that the social media thing almost has to go completely like away for a little bit. Mm. Because right now, I think people have gotten really, really Hooked. bad to it. Hooked on it. Bad. Think about videos from and the past. There's, and there's nothing more more worldly now. It's just so gross. Because it keeps getting worse and worse. People will do worse and worse things to get attention. And the worst part of it all is that... Um, but we got to move on. We gotta go yeah. to, we're going to go to uh, another, one. another yeah. one, right? I figured, yeah. All right, meditation of the day. Yep. All right. This is by Sister uh, Metch... Style, uh, my child of uh, Magdenburg. Okay, sister was part of the medieval lay movement known as the Beguines, and later a nun at Helfta, Germany. Of course, this is from Meditations. Okay, an authentic desire to see Jesus. If all the world were mine. And if it were pure gold and I could by desire always stay here as the noblest, loveliest, richest queen, all that would be worthless to me. I would much rather see Christ, my beloved Lord in heavenly glory. Alas, what they suffer who have to wait long for his coming. Lord God, close now your treasured gift by a holy end. Raise it up so it may be a praise to you in heaven and earth. Then a voice said, you shall receive from me a honey drink, which comes from many woods, and I will make it free so others may also enjoy it. Those who would know much but love little remain always at the beginning of a good life. Therefore, we should always carry all in our hearts if we want inwardly to please God for simple love, even with little knowledge works great things within holy simplicity is the way to all wisdom. It shows the wise. They are nothing but fools for when simplicity of heart lives in the wisdom of the senses, much holiness comes to the human soul. Hmm. Much holiness comes to the soul. Do you know? I wonder if that could be related to giving up these things in life. Now, and I don't mean it in that way, but just giving up like worldly things. Giving up your ideas of uh, 
of whatever. And like I was saying a little bit, be of peace. And remember that being of peace, not feeling peace. I think that the the Holy Spirit maintain I, that peace. Yeah. Holy. <sighs> Thank you for doing. Uh, you know, taking over, man. Appreciate mm-hmm. you. You know, I thought of this a little. The like, Enzo.com. It's time for the Catholic prayer of the day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite. And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. <laughs> Stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the oh. credo. Outstanding. Pow! He really does a great sound bite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's do this prayer right here. This is prayer to our mother of perpetual help. Oh, mother of perpetual help, grant that I may ever invoke your powerful name, the protection of the living and the salvation of the dying. Purest Mary, let your name henceforth be ever on my lips. Delay not, blessed lady, to rescue me whenever I call on you. In my temptations, in my needs, I will never cease to call on you, ever repeating your sacred name. Mary, Mary, what a consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fills my soul when I utter your sacred name or even only think of your. I thank the Lord for having given you so sweet, so powerful, so lovely a name, but I will not be content with merely uttering your name. Let my love for your prompt me ever to hail you, mother of perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, pray for me and grant me the favor I confidently ask of you. And then it says, mention your petition. Mm. I don't even have one. Definitely don't. Petition meaning? Oh, then you ask for the help. For, I should have did, oh. did that before. I just took that phone call. Also, here's, here's one I got from somebody. Mm, okay. Friend, in name of Patris, it Fili, it Spiritus Sancti. God, thank you for caring about my troubles. I am grateful that you not only want to hear my problems, but you want to bring me peace. Jesus, I praise you for all you've done in my life and all that you will continue to do. You're always good, no matter what my situation looks like. Thanks, thank you for being. My one true constant. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. You know, See, that's, that, is, that is a very, that's a big takeaway there. The one thing that is always constant is the love the Lord has. Yeah, all this other stuff is, is meaningless. I, I mean, I'm not, I mean, it really does. I'm not, and I said it earlier, I'll say it again now. I'm not trying to sound negative or depressive or anything like that when I say nothing matters. But what I mean in it is that, like, the real point of it is to be at peace, <laughs> not to be filled with emotion. That doesn't matter. Politic per se doesn't matter. The idea that your favorite sports team doesn't matter. <sighs> only what's right to me what's right in your intimate life or right in front of you type thing mm-hmm. is what matters because it's you know yep. it's what you're doing that's what matters in the, your moment of your life is what you're doing then nobody else's life at that point really matters what they're doing in it nope just keep trudging the road of happy destiny and you'll find a light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully not flames. So we're going to do our, we'll do our uh, prayer mm-hmm. for thy enemies. Yep. In our pre-praying, mm-hmm. we'll ask for the intercession of perpetual help. Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Pray for us. And nomine Padres and Fili, it's Perdue Santi. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us podcast. Please, we help. We we pray for the souls of the our the brothers of our past life that they may find you and find peace through meditation, and spirituality. And you know what? But if they don't want to do that, I mean, they don't want to find find it on on this pathway. Let them find their peace in some kind of pathway. That if that pathway leads to you, though. That's awesome. We pray for all the people 
um, with perceived power to lead with character and righteousness and to squash their egos. And we pray for Mother Earth and every being herein with special consideration for the following. For people on Twitter who like to incite anger or violence, we pray that they have a change of heart and come to the Lord. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for anyone, including the Somali man who was trying to distract during a uh, prayer service there. We pray for anyone with hearts like that, that they may let love and peace come within. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also are going to pray for the Christian nationalist movement and all of those under it that they may realize and see that their power and their ideas of things may not be right, that they may see have an open mind, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, we are also praying for Jimmy Lai and, uh, and Cardinal Zen of China, who are going to be facing a prosecution, most likely, from the China, communist China, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We also pray for any of the extremists on the left or the right, the MAGAs or the extreme liberals. It doesn't matter. We pray that they find neutrality in life and find true inner peace. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we also are going to pray for the entire Biden administration along with him that they may, let's see, lead with righteousness and not be so, I guess, different. In their um, ways of uh, their speech writing, especially. And that Joe Biden may come back to be a true good-hearted Catholic the way he was. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we also pray that social media and the power at bay that... Or the people that have power in social media platform, that they may find a change of heart. Those algorithmists, those gatekeepers. We hope that they start to open the gates... And let the truth flood in, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we also ask for to let go of materialism, to let go of our emotion, and realize that the only thing that actually matters in this life is your constant love for us. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, please accept these prayers that we offer for the souls of the sick who are in desperate need of a physician. May they accept your son Jesus Christ into their hearts as your personal savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever secular secularum nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti amen oh. amen and I have had an outstanding time wow. and uh the podcast has ended. You guys can go in peace to love, love and serve, and serve the, Lord. the Lord. Oh, yeah. Be outstanding to each other. And then, honestly, you know, check this out, please. If you want to um, help with the offertory, just that's what you got to do is subscribe, like, and subscribe, and share, and let the people know that we are here. Share with your friends. Share with your coworkers. That's share how you with show. anybody. You share, share if you care. All right, we got to go to church. Adios. Yeah, we do. Have fun. See you later. We love you. Via con Dios. Go with God and remember, God loves you. Outstanding! Pow!